you ever struggle when handling a new camera the first time? When you have to get used to all the new functions, buttons, dials, knobs, metering modes and so on? Or do you sometimes just want to take photographs and don't bother about all the possible mistakes you could have made? If you have answered one of the questions with yes, then I have something interesting for you. If not, still keep watching, it's worth it. The camera I'm talking about will take a lot of decisions away from you. All the difficult stuff for taking a photograph is already set by the developers of the camera. For example, there is no real focusing. You have only two options. There is the normal setting with a fixed focus between 3 meters and infinity. Or you can choose a close-up lens to focus between 1 to 3 meters. There is no aperture and no depth of field. You don't have to struggle with lots of aperture f-stop numbers or to be creative with depth of field and what to take inside your frame and what not. Just look in the sky and set in what you see. Is it a sunny day? Let's set sunny. Is it a cloudy day? I think you get it. Of course you can translate this into f-stop numbers like f16 or f11, sometimes maybe f8, but why should you? There's no zooming. The lens of the camera is as simple as it could be. You have one fixed focal length and a normal field of view. Not a white, not a tele, just a normal. There are no exposure times. Shutter speeds are something for professionals or wannabes. There is only one true shutter speed and it is implemented into this camera. Set the camera on M and the exposure time is something around 1 30th of a second, more or less. If it is dark, set the bulb mode and take your time. Be aware, whatever it takes, this camera works best with a tripod. So there is only one decision left to make. That is, what type of film you will use. The camera is designed to work around ISO 100, so look for those films. Be sure to take 120 film rolls, because the images you will get will be pretty large, and I'm talking about a massively 6 by 9 cm kind of large. Now you might ask what camera I'm talking about. Its name is as simple as the camera itself, and it's derived by the sound the shutter creates. The camera I am talking about today is the Aqua Cluck. It's a German camera built from 1954 to 1965. Its technical design is basically that of a box camera but with some little extras for a little nicer look. The motto for the design seems to be less is more, which is basically true. Every difficult technical decision you have to make is already set by Aqua. And there are some more little details to mention. The viewfinder is for example basically just a little window on the top that gives you approximately the idea of your framing. Do not take it too serious. You have a little strap on the side, which is nice but not that useful at all. Really useful instead is the little frame counter window on the back side. All in all, the clock is almost as simplified as it could be. But believe me, this camera has its own charm. If you wait for the end, you will maybe be surprised about the images that can be taken with her. But let's start with the beginning. And in the beginning, there is the film loading. As for all new gear, I'm every time excited to load a first roll and get it out for shooting. So let's grab a roll and put it inside. In this case, my choice is a roll of Fujifilm Neopen 100 Acros, a very contrasty black and white ISO 100 film in 120 format. In the next step, we're going to open up the camera. For this, you have a large closure on the underside. Just turn it around 90 degrees and separate the two pieces. Inside the camera there is not that much. You have one big hole. This is already the size of the images you will get. On the one side there is a take-up spool. And nothing else on the other side. 
but the spool has to be on the other side. So I just put it into the right place. And now you can use the film advance knob to advance the film as you can see. In the next step you can take the film and put it in the right place. Now pull the paper all around to the take-up spool and fiddle it inside, so that the film does not slip out anymore. Is it fixed? Then close the camera. Once the door is closed, you can open the film counter window and start spooling until you see the one. Now you are ready to shoot. I had in mind to make some city, architecture and streetscape pictures in the center of Stuttgart, Germany. So on one free morning I grabbed my camera and took a train into the city. Once arrived in the city, I started to take some photos. Here in this first shot, the building you can see is the State's Theatre in the Upper Palace Garden in the center of Stuttgart. Before, I want to say some words and get a little into the characteristics of the Artverklag. At first, I have to say I am positively surprised with the image quality. In fact, I did expect much less from this plastic camera. For example, here I have a shot against the sun. Maybe you have noticed the flares of the iPhone shot before. Therefore, contrast and details are pretty good in the center. Nevertheless, the contrast in the following photos will be stronger. But when you look for details and sharpness in the corners, you will see a dramatic loss. I would say that 80% of the center of the image are usable. This is pretty good, especially when taking into account how large 6x9 cm are. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison with a strip of the Aqua Clark and a strip of 35mm images. All in all, the image quality is quite pleasing when you do not pixel peep too much, and the soft borders and corners lead the focus of the viewer more into the center of the images. So this is where you have to place your subject. I have to say that I am pretty happy with this first photo. That being said, now I will continue with the rest of the slideshow and would be happy to know afterwards which of the images is your favorite and what you think about the Aqua Clark. After the slideshow I will give a short summary and recommendation, so stay tuned.
I hope I gave you a good impression of what the camera is capable to do. The images have a good amount of details with a certain softness, especially in the corners, but the negatives are really large and impressive, especially in real life. This makes the Aqua Clux somehow unique. Do I recommend it? Definitely yes. You can find used cameras between 5 to 20 euro on eBay. And for this money, the fun, the process of taking images and the joy with the outcome are definitely worth it. That's it for now. I hope you liked the video and I want to end it with the obligatory YouTube words and therefore I kindly ask you to leave a like and a comment and maybe consider to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Bye.